What's going on, Youngstown? My name is Chris Vittorio, and welcome to Light the Wick. Today, we've got a story diving into a newer piece of the Youngstown area, and also what's new with Pete the Penguin, coming up right here on Light the Wick. This week, Katie went over to Westside Bowl to get an exclusive interview with owner Nate Offerdahl about Youngstown's biggest up-and-coming music venue. Let's check it out. My name is Nathan Offerdahl. Um, my wife and I uh, own Westside Bowl. Uh, we bought, bought the building uh, March 7th of 2018. Um, it was sort of the culmination of probably 20 years of thinking about and talking about and eventually planning to start a music venue in the city of Youngstown that could have the ca capacity of about 500 so that we could book regional national touring bands. When we started um, our search, serious search, probably about three years prior to when we bought the building itself. Um, we sort of started looking at properties. Um, we, we found sort of a handful that we really liked, we thought that would fit the bill. None of them were bowling alleys. Uh, it was not our intention at all to buy a bowling alley. Um, it just sort of ended up happening. We went up to visit with Cindy and Mark, um, Cindy Barber and Mark Leedy, the two folks who own the Beachland Ballroom, which is really sort of what we were trying to copy here in Youngstown. The ability to do a small show and a big show, sometimes do them on the same day, uh, have two different events going on at the same time. So the, our one year anniversary is actually a couple of days away. Um, the anniversary party is March 15th and 16th. Um, and then again on the 29th and 30th, we sort of split it up. Um, we've got, probably since the beginning, we've had the biggest, you know, a, a large chunk of our support has come from bands that play really loud, heavy music. Um, and we're starting to get more support from bands that are a little poppier, lighter, have a little bit younger crowd. So we, what we wanted to do was split it up. So the 15th and 16th is a lot of bands like, uh, and louder bands, both from here and from out of town. Um, it's also sort of regional and local. And then on the 29th and 30th, um, sort of the other end of the party, uh, the Vindies play the 29th, and then the West Fest is on the 30th. For more information about Westside Bowl and all of their upcoming events, be sure to check out their Facebook page. Next up, our intrepid reporter David Leach went out to discover the history behind the mascot, the myth, the legend, our beloved Pete the Penguin in our first installment of Pete Palooza. My name is Lisa Garfoli and I work at the YSU Archives and Special Collections. I um, process historical material um, that describes the events and happenings on the YSU campus. I will start with how we got the idea of having a penguin as a mascot. Um, it all started in 1932 with the Youngstown College basketball team and they had to go by bus. The bus was poorly heated, the basketball team made it down there, it's the dead of winter, their uniforms didn't keep them very warm. So when it came to practice on the court, they started jumping around, flapping their arms, and the coach of West Virginia College said, look at them kids from Youngstown College. They look like a bunch of penguins flapping their arms and jumping around. 
and the name stuck. The students loved it. In 1938 was when we had a football team. So the idea was, well, what should we have as a mascot for the football team? And the student body said, penguins. We have to have penguins. And that is basically how we got the name penguins. Youngstown College, Youngstown University, and then YSU, Youngstown State University, went through a transition of three live penguins. After the third one, the student body realized it's not a great idea to have live penguins on campus. And at the time, they just decided it was better, hey, let's just have a person in a suit as a penguin. And that's where we see um, Pete the Penguin today. Uh, the first student to wear the costume actually was um, Vic Rubenstein. He was told by the Dean of Men at that time when we were in university that he needed his help. And Vic Rubenstein was very popular with the students. He was very much a person, people person. And the first penguin as a human mascot was basically a paper mache head and the student wearing a tuxedo. So, and, and nobody knew his identity. He had to keep it a secret that he was Pete the Penguin. So it wasn't until years later when Vic Rubenstein said, yes, I was Pete the Penguin. But yeah, sometime in the 70s was when we had the traditional suit of Pete the Penguin. In the 1980s was when Penny came along. Um, the Pete you know today, the look, the scarf, the hat and everything, that didn't really come along until the late 70s. And basically his look hasn't really changed since then. I would say Pete is the embodiment of school spirit. I mean, because everyone's always so happy to see him. He, everyone, he makes everybody laugh. He's at all the events. So, I mean, he really embodies the school spirit. He's really there to motivate the students, get them all riled up and happy and, and to support the team. And life would be dull without Pete the Penguin, I think. Wow. There's way more to Pete than I thought. Stay tuned for episode two of Pete Palooza, coming soon. Well, that does it for us here on Light the Wick. Make sure to follow us on all our social media, and remember to use the hashtag, the Wick is lit. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week, Youngstown.